Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to Everything Meta. And we have a special guest or two special guests from Crypto Sapiens today. We have Humpty and Flow Science. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. They uh, answered the call at the last minute. We really appreciate them. Couple questions, basic questions, general roundtable. What I want to do is make sure that our audience understands what it is you do, um, how it is you fit in the, in the general crypto and, and DeSide space. And so let's start off with the very basic. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, who are you asking? You, Humpty, seems like the best question for you. <laughs> you yeah, it seems, right. seems like you're the best to answer the question, maybe. Uh, sure, sure. So uh, I'm Humpty Calderon. Uh, I've been in the space since about 2018, building. Previous to that, speculating 2016. It took me about two years to realize that there was more to this game than just like, you know, financial. Uh, uh, so in 2018, I launched my first uh, project together with a few people that I met in my local meetups. We were developing or building uh, validator nodes across delegated proof of stake networks. Um, we were building across projects like Tron, Harmony, IOTEX, and uh, developing a pretty considerable community around the project. Uh, this is before DAO tooling existed, so we had to build a lot of the stuff from scratch to be able to uh, enable people to delegate, um, to be able to enable people to earn rewards, to communicate with one another, participate in governance. So uh, it's really interesting to see the development of that technology now. Um, and, you know, through cool things like Gnosis, say, for multi-sigs and Snapshot for governance. So um, really kind of thrilled to see the evolution of the technology in the Web3 space. Uh, in 2020, uh, I joined a project called Ontology, which is building decentralized identity and data tools. Um, then immediately after that, realized the impact of DAOs, uh, you know, in early 2021. and after joining a few different DAOs uh, together with Bankless DAO, uh, spun up Crypto Sapiens, which is you know facilitated uh, through Bankless DAO and its community, Flow Science. That's how uh, him and I connected, and you know now the way that I see it, this is a community-owned project um, where the community is building it out. The value generated, value captured, really should be the communities. Um, also building out a project called Orange Protocol, which is building out the uh, reputation layer of Web3. That sounds uh, great. Thank you for that information, that introduction. Uh, Peyote, why don't you, for the benefit of those who will be hearing you for the first time, describe what it is you do, your role, and how we are all here. Ah, uh, uh, well, <laughs> we... Uh... I guess I've been in crypto for a while, <laughs> to say the least. Um, most recently, I guess about a year ago, we, we launched an incubator uh, DAO uh, to incubate blockchain projects. Um, since then, I think as a non-anonymous uh, dev, uh, we've incubated and launched over $500, you know, $500 million in cumulative peak market cap of projects um i think what we really focus in on is is whether the project that we're incubating is adding to the space or if it's a new innovation in blockchain uh you know tech or science um so like i think our most successful launch was a, a new innovation in, in token smart contracts and as a result, I, I think like 10 to 20% of all new tokens launched have our code in it. <laughs> you know, everybody mm -hmm. seems to like, like the, that code. Um, and uh, yeah, so like moving forward, we, we launched the science DAO um, in hopes of, uh, you know, democratizing scientific funding uh, and bringing people together inside of a, inside of a think tank uh, specifically for science. Uh, within our incubator DAO, we have several people in the sciences. Um, and so it was like the natural progression. Personally, I think the three use cases for crypto, for blockchain that I'm, I'm most bullish on, uh, obviously you have hyper financialization, right? Like financial tools. 
there's gaming, right? People can use blockchain science for, for gaming. And then, uh, and then the sciences, right? And then, so that's sort of like this open field and, and trajectory that we're moving into um, that, that we want to be a part of. Uh, it's, it's tough. You know, the audience, I'm not sure if the audience is quite there for DSI and, and, you know, applying blockchain to the sciences just yet as most of the turbulence and, and velocity of, of funds moving around inside of DeFi are, are still speculative, right? And so I think the space is going to need some time to mature and whatnot. But yeah, that's basically, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's me. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I've launched a lot of projects. <laughs> so, but yeah. yeah. Flow Science, can you respond to that? Uh, you, you look like you have something to say. Yeah, man. <clears throat> I, 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 I love your work. I've been watching science now for a while. I, uh, I know you have some, uh, some peacocks on the property, I think, right? They're kind of famous as well, too. <laughs> <You're a peacock. laughs> huh? He's talking about your peacock. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of those Twitter spaces where they're just like yapping in the background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Thanks for coming on. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But uh, my story is, uh, you know, I've been in blockchain, I guess, even pr probably about as long as I've been, but not really maybe as, as involved. I've uh, My background is in science. Like, I'm a, a molecular, molecular biologist, so I'm actually sitting in my lab right now. Um, I've started this lab. Uh, it was my first, like, real venture uh, back in 2017 when I was finishing up grad school. And um, <clears throat> it's a genomics lab. So we focus on uh, doing genetic tests uh, for cannabis and like, genetic diagnostic tests, like PCR-based tests, which evolved into sort of developing a, a ancestry test. And if you know anything about how like 23andMe and Ancestry.com work or like human DNA, it, they're not making any money on the testing. You know, they're not a testing lab. They make money on selling data out the back door. Um, and I've always been, you know, in grad school, I taught myself how to code and do complex network analysis. Uh, that's what I did my research on was studying like genetic, uh, gene expression networks and how different genes are turned on, turned off during, uh, actually limb regeneration, studying like uh, tissue regeneration and like, salamanders and things, um, and applying that to humans and why don't humans re regenerate, but it was that complex network analysis perspective that really uh, kind of got me diving into blockchain DAOs uh, last year, which was when I started seeing the other uh, human aspect of it, <clears throat> sort of forming these nodes and edges and connections and people trying to quantify, you know, what is a DAO? Is it, you know, is it the network of people? Is it a network of contributions or with, you know, different things and trying to wrap my head around all that. And it just dove straight into DAOs and uh, it was basically, you know, uh, still managing my lab uh, during the day and running the lab and then, in, you know, spending all night, uh, researching DAOs and getting involved in Bankless DAO. And so I met Humpty and get involved, got involved with, um, you know, more in the sci comms aspect, uh, down the road as we ended up spinning up the centralized, uh, more recently, but, um, you know, education and, uh, communications has always been a big, uh, passion of mine, both in grad school. And then afterwards when running my business and doing marketing and things like that, I always approached from sort of a, educational perspective so when, once i you know got involved with crypto sapiens it was like this is right up my alley <laughs> just this this the, you know learning about DAOs and learning about these sorts of things and uh being a part of that those, those sorts of communities uh to the point where now i'm basically full-time web3 and uh just sort of bouncing around different DAOs. started up a uh, cannabis genome DAO last year for our customers to basically publish that all that data i was talking about uh, so they own all, you know, we've never owned our customer data. Like we do testing where we basically act as a consultant. You know, if you get a logo from a designer, you own the logo. Well, that's how we believe our lab should operate. You know, you get data, it's your data. But then what are, you know, how, what are our customers going to do with all this data, right? There's no way to share it. There's no way to take ownership of it, to monetize it in a way that's fair and equitable uh, until we started learning about blockchain and DAOs and marketplaces and things like that. So been jumping on a bunch of different DSI projects and publishing data data sharing sort of space. That's my angle uh, in DSI you know, nowadays. So that's my story. Cool. Does DSI need to focus on the greater good of humanity at the expense of um, being able to uh, monetize or financialize its its uh, 
followers or members of DAOs, et cetera? Do you think that is a necessary process? Anyone? Yeah, I think it's the core of core Web3, really. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about like the financialization and how that's like one of the, you know, the main three, right? But the idea of like, yeah, even like when it comes to like gaming or science or any of this sort of anything you really apply in Web3, I think it's that ability to, you know, remove that extractive middleman and, and give power directly to the people who are participating in whatever it is. Humpty, what about you? You, you agree. I am not uh, someone building out DSI, so I will not be as informed as, uh, you know, Flow Science or maybe Peyote. Um, but I do think that there is an importance in trying to find a balance between the two. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to Web3, it, you know, one of the core concepts, I believe it's around the ownership of, you know, your data, right? So I think Flow Science was alluding to that uh, moments ago in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, enabling that ownership uh, to these, uh, you know, these participants in the ecosystem. But I think one thing we've seen um, kind of more and more in the Web3 ecosystem is that if you don't necessarily build uh, kind of a sustainable model for the project to exist in the long term, then it just won't. Right. So we need to find ways to be able to develop these systems that are self-sovereign, but also find ways to create a business model around it to be able to generate revenue and sustain it. Right. Um, so, you know, I think a few projects have tried to do that through tokenization of it. Right. And exiting to community. But there is a portion of that which is locked in a treasury, uh, which then allows for uh, these projects to. Uh, remunerate themselves, you know, or the people that are working uh, and to develop this project. But then the bear market happens and these mm -hmm. tokens in that treasury become worthless. Uh, so it, it's tricky, right? I think that also, you know, being mindful of, you know, good treasury practices, right? As long as it's public um, mm -hmm. is, is something that uh, projects are either learned early or have learned the hard way after the bear market hit in terms of being able to diversify, diversify that so that uh, they can remain, uh, you know, active and viable outside of a bear market. What's that, Peyote? Oh, solvent. Yeah, I was just saying it remains solvent. solvent. Sure, yeah. yeah. Peyote, yeah. Talk, talk about some of the projects going on in the science style and uh, in terms of their value to the community and the general response or your surprise at maybe how bearish people are in terms of helping to execute on these things. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. In the science style right now, I think that we have a few main projects that we're working on. Um, we have a team that is trying to develop a, a machine learning project um, that, that's involved with the centralized exchanges and, and trading bots using a, uh, you know, machine learning to, to get smarter at finding arbitrage opportunities in, in an attempt to predict the market. So a little bit of a, you know, AI, ML, um, you know, type of scientific approach to, to crypto trading. Um, so that one's kind of cool. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're interested in it. Uh, there's another project, one of our advisors on our, on our panel, Dr. Haume, uh, has multiple patents, uh, to utilize CAR T cell treatment to, to cure uh, type one diabetes. Um, so we have like a kind of a biotech, um, you know, sort of, sort of arm as well. Um, several of the people on the panel have pretty storied careers um, in, in venture capital, specifically in the biotech uh, arena. Uh, so that's, that's very exciting as well. One, one difficulty with that project that we're seeing is people in web three in, in crypto are used to super fast paced, uh, you know, type of results and, you know, traditional finance and biotech getting licenses, closing deals is takes a little bit longer. Uh, and so we've been trying to educate people on like kind of the expected timelines of, of some of these raises and, and sort of what to expect. Um, we have another project, obviously ETH 
uh, you know, ETH is coming up here on the merge uh, in a couple days. Um, so we're trying to build out. So one thing people don't realize is the science DAO actually is operating with an SEC exemption. And so the DAO is actually able to offer investment products um, to accredited investors and, and wherever, you know, whatever countries that, uh, you know, that allows uh, the, their citizens to invest in investment products. So that like, you know, we, we tried to start with like a regulation, you know, conscious approach. And for that reason, um, one of the the next projects I think that that we're going to be working on is a validator uh, staking porthole essentially for institutions um, to be able to to stake you know their their thirty two ETH or whatever it might be um, and, and utilize our our beacon nodes that we would be providing um, and, and see some type of return. Um, I, you see a lot of projects out there that that say, you know, they, they use buzzwords and jargon like passive income and returns back to investors and this and that when, when really they're not actually able to. Um, so I think that's one benefit of the science DAO uh, is just off, being able to offer actual investment products. But that's kind of like what the three things that we have going on right now. We're, we're a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say we're delayed on our deliverables, but we, we're building out a, a, an investment platform similar to seedinvest.com, um, where you know people can find people can find uh, investment opportunities, especially like early stage, and then be able to utilize their cryptocurrency assets as opposed to just fiat to invest in uh, in these specific startups. Now, what what we what we see or what our theory is right is that instead of holding eth or a volatile asset that might be moving with the ebb and flow of the market if the investor so chooses they can attach some of their cryptocurrency value to an early stage scientific startup and then have that value follow the trajectory of that scientific startup all right is is kind of the idea did I, did I, I ramble a lot guys. So you have to <laughs> organize me. <laughs> we, we got it, Peyote. It was great. Uh, okay. Moving on to, uh, I want to go back to flow science. Let's talk about what it is that you may be working on that you want to introduce uh, to, to a different audience or any question that you might be grappling with at the moment. And then next I'll get to you. Humpty. Yeah, no, that got me thinking a lot about um, my background actually, but uh, you know, it's cool. You guys are doing, you know, a funding platform, right? I think in DSI, there's like a few main things that really stuck out to me as like the big things that can be addressed by DSI. And like one of them is, is funding, right? Obviously a big decentralizing access to that funding and projects and where, how it's, those treasuries are managed. Uh, and also, uh, you know, publishing and things like that. And so, um, you know, yeah, definitely kudos to, to having that, uh, you know, platform going and being, being funding so many projects um it's cool like too it's like you know how do you even like science is so broad too so right obviously the science out is going to have so many different branches so that's that's super cool to hear um but but back to you um like the current uh you know our front basically for crypto sapiens we're doing uh we're involved right now with a um a a, a basically grant matching round right on uh so my background is is for gitcoin so in the ethereum ecosystem there is a big centralized or not well maybe not I guess it is kind of centralized, right? They're a DAO, but uh, <laughs> it's this platform where, you know, you can get the apply to get listed, basically you get donations. And so uh, Crypto Sapiens, you know, we have been, uh, you know, produced in partnership with Bank of Sal, and they funded our early development. And, uh, you know, we're trying to move towards this, uh, this community where, you know, basically we're the community of listeners and participants and, you know, the guests and the show and their ecosystems and things like that are basically the owners of the, the media platform that we're producing, right? Um, by through listening and through owning, you know, we're working on, uh, you know, sort of maybe doing something with our with our episodes uh, down the road, but uh, some way to engage the community that way. And right, and so we we really focus on trying to cover projects, kind of like you like you guys are doing with Science Down and things like and other projects in the, in the DSI world. That's what we're doing with Decentralized. And uh, so we're, you know, we're not just participating in this round or we're basically on the, on the Gitcoin platform right now, uh, live accepting donations. And so uh, people donate that that's matched. 
but uh, also on Friday, Saturday, this upcoming week, we're hosting a uh, DSI focused uh, give a thon, basically. So it's a donation you know, drive. So it'll be on Twitter spaces two hours on Friday and then three hours on Saturday, just hyping all these other DSI projects, right? And so instead of just having a, a grant page where they can just, you know, have whatever's written and they've got to update it and it's, you know, it's a big thing you read, right? And people aren't going to read through 50 different grants. Uh, but if they want to hop on the Twitter mm -hmm. space, if they want to come check out a few different projects or, or listen to the whole thing, right? The, all these projects will just kind of be rapid fire, like five minutes, 10 minutes at a time, uh, just hopping up on our Twitter space. Um, so that's just a way to, you know, we're not in the D side round. <laughs> we, we're just in the main round, but uh, we want to just promote other projects uh, that are in the D side space that are up and coming and building towards this, you know, all this stuff we're talking about. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to, to, to hype there. Uh, and what we've got going on on Crypto Sapiens and DSI coming up this this next week. That's super really cool. cool. Yeah, <clears throat> Humpty, what do you what do you want to imp impress upon the audience? What it is? What is it that uh, you're working on, or you find important at the moment? What's perplexing you? What's what's going on? No, I mean, I I'm just going to double down on what Flowsign said. I think there's uh, an important conversation being had right now uh, through that's being facilitated through Gitcoin grants, right? Uh, and I think uh, there's actually quite a few. One of them is the ability to support your peers in this ecosystem, um, kind of celebrate the work that's being done, uh, you know, as, as, as uh, public goods, if you will. Uh, there is this, you know, this is very much an emergent space and there's, a lot of opportunity to build, but there's also opportunity to fail, right? And, you know, if we don't support one another, you know, I think it just cripples uh, the entire space. So I really am a big fan of like what Gitcoin, uh, Gitcoin is doing with Gitcoin grants, where it really opens up a platform for the community to, uh, you know, celebrate one another and say, oh, I've caught an episode of Crypto Sapiens. Um, I love what you're doing by exposing decentralized identity or decentralized science and decentralized identity uh, to a wider audience, right? In ways that are more accessible, right? In ways that are fun, in ways that are interactive. Um, so yeah, I think that that's a really powerful uh, tool that's been provided to us as community members to go and then support one another. And then of course, you know, I, I just want to also recognize, you know, the work that flow science does, you know, with crypto sapiens and being able to uh, go out and just engage with different communities and say, Oh, like we are not part of this uh, round, right. The DSI uh, round specifically, but as someone who is an ambassador for this space and someone who is also a, uh, you know, a, an ambassador for Gitcoin grants, I want to, uh, make sure that people recognize the work that you're doing and to be able to open up a conversation for, you know, kind of sharing that narrative, uh, both what is decentralized science, but also the narrative of like supporting one another uh, through public good funding. Thank you for that. Joy, yeah. uh, what do you want to say? Oh, oh, I just like just echoing the the spirit of collaboration in this space. Um, I think that DSI is is it an emerging field right a emerging sector in crypto and we're only at like the very very start here and any type of solidarity between projects i think is extremely important you'll see in other sectors inside of crypto where it's very much competitive um uh, you know people are are fighting over you know, who has more holders, who is buying in after other people buy in, it, it becomes fairly toxic. I think DSI has the ability to bring new people that were not previously in DeFi in, into, uh, into crypto, right? By providing legitimate use cases and, and seeing like, you know, sort of silencing the skeptics. For instance, like, although maybe the DeFi community and meme coin traders are in some of these DeSci projects, right? Because they think like, oh, this is a semi grown up project. The, if we're able to find, say, like a, a cure for a disease, right? And fund it. Anybody who's skeptical of blockchain, right? As a speculative industry, 
it, it is essentially silenced at that point. They, they can't really say anything any longer. Right. Um, whether we get there or not, uh, definitely collaborative effort would help. <laughs> you know, we try to echo this in some of our other projects. We have a video game project. It's a car racing game. And so many other uh, token projects and whatnot, we'll, we'll create a livery skin for them and wrap wrap a car in their token and put it in the game. We never we, like we never ask for anything. We're just like, hey, do you want a car in the game? Uh, you know, so on and so forth. So we, we definitely try. You know, we definitely try. So anyway, that's my piece. Nice. So. Last. Oh, go ahead, Humpty. No, I just wanted to kind of uh, just extend maybe a little bit, if I can, this. Uh, narrative of collaboration. You know, I Please. recently attended MCON, uh, you know, which was happening uh, last week in Denver. And it was just incredible, uh, the energy that was there, right? But really, the types of people that were in attendance is very much different, I think, from uh, many of the other uh, crypto uh, you know, conferences. In fact, I kept calling it an unconference because it just very much didn't feel like one. Right, mm-hmm. even though it's like MCon, um, it 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 didn't feel like a like a conference in the traditional sense. There were people there who are builders. Uh, you know, it's really not just about being an enthusiast, but actually taking on a role of building out the future that you want to see. Um, you know, whether that is through you know some sort of like DeFi vehicle or DeSci vehicle or um, you know media. Um, vehicle as, as, as crypto sapiens does the but the outcome of such a curated experience is that the people coming in there really are fans of everyone else who's there uh, and so there's a lot of collaboration speak happening from the moment those doors open to the moment those doors close in fact the doors close and we're still hanging outside on the lawn uh, just kind of chatting and talking about what was next, right, in terms of, you know, either uh, MCON 3 or what's next for our projects and the potential collaborations between that. So I think it's really exciting to see that there are various ways uh, to be able to support one another, right? Gitcoin Grants is just one platform. Science DAO is another platform. Crypto Savings is another platform. But even like these much larger kind of events uh, play a role as well in bringing people together right? Onboarding new types of uh, users or participants into, into the ecosystem, but then kind of building these like strong relationships of collaboration. Yeah. I, I appreciate that you said that. And uh, I, I, you gave me something, I guess, uh, for me to push back on for the sake of uh, just the conversation, I suppose. Uh, by trade, I, I am a sociologist. I'm, I'm typically concerned with how it is that groups and, and folks are working together on projects or, or whatever in any any space, any social setting. So I'm, I'm always curious then with the discourse in and around these DAOs um, and all the collaboration that's happening, why do you think that there isn't uh, maybe more of a push for people to consolidate and kind of, uh, you know, maybe shut down their own individual group for the sake of the good and just work, why don't we just make one DAO and I'll just really kill it? I have thoughts Anyone. on that. Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, I think there's there's two things uh, happening, in my opinion. Uh, the first is that there is just a lot of opportunity. Uh, An opportunity mm-hmm. breeds ideas and each idea then becomes kind of this vehicle for organization and collaboration, a.k.a. a DAO, right? Um, I would even say like Crypto Sapiens as an example. Like this is something that we built within Bankless DAO, but as it continues to grow, we start seeing a bit of a distinction between the way that the DAO, Bankless DAO operates and the way that Crypto Sapiens operates. Now, while there's a synergy between the two, there's Mm -hmm. definitely uh, kind of different ways in, in the way that it's able to operate. So, and again, this is brought on by opportunity, right? Uh, So I think that that's one of them. The other though, and the counter narrative to that, I suppose, is that as these projects continue to grow and develop into their own uh, DAO, potentially, uh, there is also this idea of like 
projects coming together, not necessarily merging, right, to become one, uh, you know, one organization, but really around a set of values and core mm -hmm. missions, right? And so we can imagine um, in the future, this being categorized as a super DAO, right, where all of these uh, DAOs that are organized around these very clear uh, like categories, right? Driven by their mission. So let's say DSI. Uh, there's the science DAO. There's you know cannabis uh, genome DAO. There's all of these different uh, DSI DAOs that, to be able to facilitate each other's success or the success of the space in general, they come together to govern as uh, you know the DSI super DAO. So you you're starting to see some of that happen, um, but n I would say because again, we're early is a lot of experimentation as to how that can happen. Because you can think of like maybe some of the practices that we carry from like web two to web three, there's maybe a way to like split, but very few examples of how you can kind of merge around these like shared objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's still a lot of uh, education uh, left for us. And I like that you kind of mentioned your background because it's people like you actually that I think are going to influence that. We need sociologists. We need psychologists. We need like all of these, uh, you know, humanities, science studies that allow that explore how human coordination uh, and communication actually mm -hmm. influence the way that we organize and the way that we uh, collaborate and so on. So yeah, I'm I'm excited for that, and I've I've started to see some of that, but I think it's still very much early. I, I think that you're also an optimist. You said uh, that with uh, the exposure comes uh, opportunity, is what you said. There's lots of opportunity, but you never mentioned greed. You never even alluded to greed. I don't talk I mean, about money, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who knows me, and I've been in this space building yeah. for years. Anytime anybody comes at me and tries to talk about money, that's not my objective, right? And yeah. I feel privileged to sur have surrounded myself in this after this amount of time with people who see the world in this in the same way, right? Mm. The people that I build with, right? Whether that it's a crypto sapiens, orange protocol, or even through friends and partners at Gitcoin and coordinate, you look at these projects, their north star is never money. Their mm. north star mm. is like, how can we impact? Uh, society, you know, positively for the greater good. So, and yep. I mean, most of my nightstand is packed with like books on exactly that, like the yeah. human, the human coordination, uh, you know, the so sociological impact, right? All of that I think is is instrumental and and important to keep in mind because the money game, that's where we come from, right? The financialization of everything. I just finished reading Yancey Strickler's book called uh, This Could Be Our Future. And he talks about exactly that, how organizations today um, really are influenced about uh, by the financial hyper-financialization of everything. But mm -hmm. we should kind of like counter that and kind of have a goal for the next 30 years in the world we want to live in. And I think Web3 is facilitating that future. Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in. I wrote a white paper one time for, uh, for a meme project. Okay. And uh, in it, I wrote, you, you know, for a long time, I, I thought maybe the only use case for crypto was gambling and speculation, right? It's something going like, really, I mean, that's the only thing that really had a true use case for, for some time, or that's the only reason why people bought, you know, utility didn't even matter. It's whether people are buying is their volume are more people buying than selling and that is what is going to create price action right as basic as it gets however what we've seen at least in our incubator dow is that crypto can actually sort of help people become better better humans uh just from helping one another creating these communities like you know you know a lot of times especially in like the metaverse, right? Or whatever we've entered into with, with all these video chats and, and telegrams and discords, you don't really know what somebody is, you know, has going on in, in their life. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and coming into the community and 
talking with people and and having some type of hope at you know quote unquote financial freedom <laughs> you know um really really get brings people together and you'll see people get hacked you know they'll get drained they'll connect to something in DeFi, and you'll see a whole bunch of people come in and and start creating some type of charity wallet to help that person out and you, you've seen people mobilize to try to do good things uh we did a charity project our community entirely voted to do it by themselves uh launched the charity project contributed and donated a lot to the the refugee crisis coming out of the ukraine and russia um and you see these people like on their own decide to do this like lots and lots of people um uh, which i i think is really cool so anyway just to echo that that point uh the the human aspect uh not just the the financialization of everything uh, you know but people becoming better and choosing to do things uh based on i i, I don't know <laughs> so before we get to you flow science you know you're, you're being a little modest peyote i'm gonna let you i'm gonna gonna put you out there a little bit you know not only did we vote on that but uh, you and another member of our community went there boots on the ground to help facilitate this uh, yeah right and, yeah, and I got that shouldn't be lost <laughs> yeah <laughs> i got COVID. yeah yeah I got so so there was a lot going on with that uh flow science what say you big props um that's awesome yeah i think uh i just really definitely echo everything both of you just said um i can't uh that that's kind of why i'm in this as well um uh, that you know we are moving beyond uh that sort of financialization as the goal um there was this awesome article a couple years ago called bitcoin is time and, and ultimately i think that's really right that's the most valuable obviously that's the most valuable thing we have so you can't buy more time uh, and what does that mean, right? And to me, that's uh, instead of really like the financialization of things, I think we're representing human effort, right? And, and like kind of the work that Humpty does in terms of identity and reputation, repu like representing what it means to even be a person in this metaverse, in this digital world, right? Owning all of those assets and things, basically creating assets out of things that are, you know, just your, your actions, right? And, and your time and what does that even mean right it's like any sort of token to me sh kind of represents like energy in the system and when you're doing stuff and you're being part of a DAO and you're, and you're contributing things you're creating uh you're writing code or you're you're creating media and you're you're you know when doing the whole system events and connecting with people and forming those relationships right those are all actions and things that are manifesting as you're turning this energy into a thing Right. And we are we are like Newton's or not. Uh, we are the, the three thermodynamic principles of right physics. Right. You can only create uh, you can't like you can't destroy things right? you can only transmute this stuff. And so I think we are those actors. We are taking these things and, and basically turning like kind of what I said earlier, that it's back to this uh, the concept of like these extractive systems, these like zero sum. The way that most of the world works is you pay me for something. I give you something back and the output. The net output is zero, right? But with crypto, we can sort of have these relationships like with a sub DAO and a super DAO where it's, it's synergistic and you don't end up with zero at the end. You know, you end up with, you, you, you change the sign on the equation. You end up with plus one, minus negative one, right? By giving something <laughs> away, by giving something away, you're actually creating value, right? So at the end of the day, we end up with two in the system instead of zero. Um, so we're literally creating value by through our actions and through our time and through where we spend this energy. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask this then. Uh, and this is open for anybody and everybody. Um, if, if you like, first going to posit my thought and if you believe it's true or not, please respond and then tell me the solution. So I believe that most people or there's a fair majority of people who are in the uh, DeFi space who are there for the money. And I believe that there is a move to poach people from the DeFi space to the DeFi space where people are there for more altruistic purposes, as you as you pointed out. Is there not then a challenge of trying to get people from one lane to the next? Oh, well, people are definitely here for the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, some are here because it, they found purpose and, and that they, they have happiness, it, you know, like as a serial entrepreneur, working in traditional businesses 
things don't move as fast as you want them to. And if you came into crypto and into this metaverse, you're able to work 24 hours a day and people yeah. are always available and ready to go. <laughs> so you're like, okay, we can get a lot more things done. Um, I don't know if we need to poach people from DeFi because I think that a lot of people have their strategies and they're there for specific reasons. But I think that building out DeFi for the future, I think we need to bring more people into crypto, people that are not in crypto right now, um, bring them in. And I think that's one of the, the most, the most maybe most powerful things that DeFi can do for crypto overall um, is is bring a new audience in, into this. Uh, decentralized you know world that, that we're living in right so yeah and things like what you're doing with uh like actually like we said earlier like if we can with DSI salt like cure a disease like that honestly right now with the amount of money in the DSI space it's kind of it's ridiculous it's it's the biggest bargain revolution in human history ever uh like <laughs> you know the amount of value that's mm. delivered by this collaboration and like at the meta level like that's the result right is like curing a disease dirt cheap and like changing humanity yep yeah all yep. right so uh i'm gonna close with a question before i do is there anything that anyone wants to say before i ask my final question that looks like a no oh right. it was a pleasure having you guys <laughs> I, ken and i do this um twice a week okay we're like 30 episodes in Maybe 30 people watch our, our, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe it's, less. And it's me. It's so, me watching. Yeah. Just making sure we didn't say anything bad. Uh, yeah. It was a, a real pleasure having you guys, uh, having you guys on here. Um, some of our past uh, podcast type episodes, we, we have other projects come in and kind of tell, you know, the, the audience <laughs> what they're about and whatnot and it, it gives them some content you know that they can be like instead of hosting a vc or instead of posting more white papers or whatever it is they can be like here look at this video and we explain pretty much everything about who we are and, and whatnot so that you know that's that's all we're really up to we don't charge anything you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we go, yeah so. Anyway, we're we're just having conversations, man. Two Collab guys have, having a chat. Yeah. Collaborative Web Three Media. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. What is it? No, sorry, ahead. I was gonna say we're in the media space too, and we know exactly the value of these conversations. Um, so very uh, excited to have had the opportunity to chat with y'all. Uh, and even though I don't think we really touched too much on Crypto Sapiens, um, yeah. I think that please we do had, say what you want to oh, say. No, no, that's fine. We had other <laughs> valuable conversations yeah. about, you know, the empowerment of, you know, uh, humanity through technology. So I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to leave it open for kind of whatever came up and uh, just typically follow the flow of the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more than happy to either have you guys back or maybe we can come on your platform. Uh, when when you're you know available and we can continue the conversation, whatever it is that we can do to kind of help the space. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Humpty, for coming on. I think. Uh, <laughs> and sorry if we we just ramble on and whatnot, but we will definitely um, post and direct some traffic over to Crypto Sapiens. So thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate that. Same. Uh, we'll share links here afterwards and we'll definitely uh, happy to do that. Thanks guys. I'm going to end the recording for the rest of you watching. Thank you for watching and goodbye. What was the last question? I don't know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs>